Well, hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this video, I'm going to do a review on a nifty little device I was sent. Full disclosure, I did not pay for it. It was sent to me free of charge, but if they want it back, I will return it as long as they pay return shipping, honestly. This is the box that it comes in, pretty simple, mostly blue and a couple of white labels on it and some scannable codes and such. Inside the box, we have the actual unit itself. It's actually identified as a networking USB server, okay? It has on it a port for the power and included is a power connector for that particular port, a barrel connector that is converted to USB-A and they include a USB-A power supply. I didn't get a chance to analyze what the current rating is, but this size usually is one amp or one and a half amp at the most, but I'll let you know up on the screen here. It also includes a little RJ45 networking connector, cable that is. Let me see, how long is this cable? Just, uh, just in case somebody's interested in that. Okay, let's see. I do the fold over trick. So folded in half, it's about, could be 18 inches, maybe two feet at the most. So in total, it's either three or four feet. I would say it's closer to three, three feet, to be honest with you. Okay. It also includes a little user and setup manual. Now, uh, most people will be able to read this without a problem, but I decided <laughs> that uh, it would be easier for me if I expanded it. So I blew it up into eight and a half by 11 sheets, two pages per sheet so I can read it more clearly. And uh, I'll be following this as I set it up and see how it works. Now it's supposed to be able to handle on that USB port, just about any USB device that will then be network accessible because this device, like any other unit that you connect to your network, whether it's an appliance or a computer, will go grab an address from the, the uh, DHCP server and uh, then communicate with any device that knows that address. I'm going to check, just make sure a regular USB stick works. I have one right here. And I will also try, and hopefully this works because this would be nice to get done network-wise, is this printer. I have this label printer that I use quite often when I'm mailing packages and or large envelopes to people related to my business. Uh, my business being this channel. But, uh, you know, if that works, that'd be great. Unfortunately, I did look through the list that's online with the website for this, for the device itself. And it does not list this particular model, Brother Printer. So I'm hopeful that it does work fine and we'll find out. So there we go. Let me go ahead now and set things up here in the desktop and we'll see how it all works. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I have everything in place now to do the testing. I have two different printers. I have a regular black and white low end laser printer that can only attach through USB. I have a label printer from brother and I have my USB stick along with ZAOZ USB server. I have the cable connected, but I didn't plug it in yet. So what we'll do now is I'll plug it in. We'll see it initialize. And then from that point forward, we'll start connecting these devices using the appropriate software on the computer to see if we can actually access it. Okay. Okay. Let me plug this thing in. Here's the power brick for it. Plug it in right now. Oh, I see it coming on. We're going to have to wait until the thing stops blinking to be completely initialized. Sys is blinking. So we have to wait till that Sys one stops blinking before we can consider it connected. And then I have a scanner on my local network and I'll see that it, if it picks up an address or not. Oh, it looks like it's solid now. Now I have no USB plugged in. It, it's cloud connected. Oh, that's interesting. I think what that means is it's now acting as a wireless server. So if we want to uh, utilize it, I'll talk about that in a few minutes, we can actually get this guy to connect up to our wireless network. I don't know if that keeps blinking or not, but let me see what the scanner says. Forgot to connect up the ethernet cable. <laughs> let me connect that guy up. So I'm going to go right to LAN 1. Let's see, does it show up on my switch? Yes, it does. It's showing up on my switch at 100 meg. So it's not a, a one gigabyte interface, it's only 100 meg. And now it looks like the cloud has stopped 
blinking and the LAN one is now blinking. So it looks like we're pretty well along at this point. I found that out when I did the scan, it didn't see anything. So let me see if it sees anything now. What I've done here is I've gone, according to the book, it says to go to zeoset.local. And what you see on the screen here right now is what I did is I opened up a web browser and I typed in the zeoset.local right over here. Okay. And then it opened up this uh, web page onto the little device. Okay. The server. It says, according to the book, that the password is admin. I'm typing that in. And now we are into the actual web page that is the system itself. And it gives us all the information about it. We can go and set up the Wi Fi from here if we'd like to. We could start it. Or we could open up on my Wi Fi, connect up to the device itself to tell it how to configure wi wireless only. So this, this is got to this page because I actually have a wired connection. The alternative, if you don't want a wired connection at all, is to go to the specific name of the server as a wireless device. So if you look at your list of wireless devices, you will see that and then click on that and it'll ask you the information it needs to connect up to your wireless environment. But I didn't do that since I decided to wire it directly rather than use wireless for purposes of making a, a film without any issues to it, because you never know when wireless might, uh, you know, delay on you a little bit. Anyway, you can see all of the different things here. You can see the network, you can see the cloud. Um, it has all sorts of logs on it telling you what's going on. So you can, if you have any problems, you can come in here and take a look at the logs. A lot of it's in Chinese, um, I guess, when they did their initial testing. So I guess we could just skip that for now. We could look at device status. We can see how long it's been running. We can check the firmware version. You can update the firmware using this, uh, this web page as well. So I wanted to show this before we actually connected the device up to a printer. Let me get out of this now and uh, log out. There we go. Okay, now I'm installing the virtual USB connect tool. I had to download this from the ZEOS-Z website. Finish, popped up over here. So let me bring it over. So it sees that I have something connected to the USB port, HP LaserJet P1006. It's currently disconnected. Let me do a connect and see what happens. It's out now it says it's connected. Okay, let me see if uh, the printer will actually work at this point and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, let's connect a printer. Let's this printer right here. Connect the USB up to the USB port here. Like that. I don't see any changes in the lights. Well, let me turn on the printer. Oh, now it looks like USB lit up. And the printer has initialized. It's got a green light on it. Okay, so I opened up the control panel and took a look at it, and it looks like there is a printer there, HP LaserJet P1006. Okay, what I have here is a document that I modified just for purposes of testing. What I'm going to do is try to print it out to this. So let me see, go over and show print, and I'm gonna make sure it's, it's already got it selected, the HP LaserJet P1006. Okay, so let me do a print on that and see what we got. Oh, something's coming out, there we go. Wow. And there we go. It printed it out exactly as what's on the screen. So beautiful. Let me go ahead and try my uh, label printer the same way and see if that works. Okay, I think the first thing I need to do is disconnect it. So I'll disconnect it here. I got a pop up on my computer that it's unplugged. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and I'll turn it off over here and make sure that we get this off. Okay, so it's no longer on. So let me change things around a bit. I will unplug that printer from here and from here. And I will plug in my label printer. Plug the power in first. Oh, I got a borrow this cable. I need this cable here. Borrow this. That guy in there. I'll plug this one into the server. I'll turn it on. Oh, the USB light came on. So that means it now sees that printer. Let me go ahead and do a refresh on the software here. Oh, now it sees a USB device QL500. Let me connect that. It says it's connected. 
So now let me open up the software that I use for doing that print. Okay, so here's the software. Let me look at recent files I've done. So you do an open computer and I have a test label here. Open that guy up and it's a mailing label that I have. So let me go ahead and try printing it. I'll print the label right from here, right here. Let's print this. Hey, looks like it did it. And there it is. That's beautiful. So both of these printers, neither one of them is on the compatibility list for this. But by using the other tool that allows me to basically add any device, it seems to work fine. Okay. The last test I will do will be with a regular USB stick that I have over here. Okay. Okay. The first thing I should do is disconnect this thing. Let me disconnect the label printer. Got a message popped up on my computer. It's been unplugged. I will turn this guy off. I will take him off of the uh, server. All right. And let me um, put the regular USB in place. Okay. USB lit up. Uh, let me do a refresh on this. Okay. Refresh. And it sees a, a disk 2.0. Let me do a connect. It sees it. It opened it up. It became drive D here. And that's the test file that I put on there. Let me open up this file and see if it says what it's supposed to say. Success. It works fine. Okay. So I was able to test two different printers and a regular USB stick and open up a file right on the USB stick across the network itself. And everything seemed to work just fine. Okay. So with that, I will close out this review. And if you wanted information on how to get one of these, uh, I'll have the link down in my notes below on where you could go and look at it, get more information from it and purchase it if you'd like. Thanks for watching.